It's haul time and this month's challenge is simple that once I've placed one order with a company, I can't use them again for the rest of April. Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. The first book that I picked up in April was Conan the Barbarian, the original Marvel Years Omnibus Volume 5. I live my life in a very straightforward way that if you put Conan on a front cover, I'm going to end up buying it. This one was no exception, I'm really glad that they've already announced that a Volume 6 is going to be coming out, along with a Volume 6 for Savage Sword of Conan. Conan is one of my favourite literary characters, I've got the original stories by Robert E. Howard and I also loved the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie whilst I was growing up. There was no way that I was missing out on this and I also just love the cover for this one. I picked this up from Books Etc along with a couple of other books and when it got delivered I said to myself what would I do without Books Etc? And then I thought to myself what would I do without Books Etc? So in February we had the £300 challenge, last month we had the Perfectly Balanced challenge and this month I'm going to do the One Max Order challenge. It's pretty straightforward but all this means is that once I've used the company and I've placed one order with them I can't go back and use them for the rest of the month. So because I picked up Conan the Barbarian along with a few other books from books etc that is already on the list of companies that I can't use again for the rest of April. Like I said though I was fortunate enough that when I brought that Conan the Barbarian Omnibus he did have a few other new releases that I wanted to pick up. The first of which was the Tony Stark Iron Man Omnibus by Dan Slott. Yeah this is really thin so I'm glad I got this at that books etc price. I think I got it for about 44% off and I know you guys want me to say and it's on the tip of my tongue and yeah, I can't really help it. I do wish that this was the Matt Fraction run. So if I have to pick up this really skinny run that people say isn't even that good, just in the hopes that we might get Matt Fraction because Marvel might have the confidence that that would sell, then I'm going to do this. I'll take one for the team. And as well, with this being quite a skinny run, I reckon I could read this in a couple of settings, get out a quick review of it, and I can see if this is something that I enjoy. Titles like this, I often go in with really lowered expectations, and I end up having quite an enjoyable time, even if it isn't something groundbreaking. So I'm still glad that I picked this one up, I was tempted to get the DM variant because I do think that is quite cool looking but I do have quite a soft spot for the Iron Man 2020 armor. And the last book that I brought from books etc before they were completely off limits was Avengers The Gathering. Now I don't really know anything about this and yes I do think that the DM variant was beautiful and far superior to this cover but this seems to be the 90s era of comics which I don't really know too much about in terms of Avengers if it wasn't Kurt Busiek that was writing it but overall I do like quite a lot of 90s comics that I have read so I think that maybe this will be something that is quite up my street even if it is that I've heard quite negative reviews about it. I unfortunately still haven't got my hands on Avengers The Crossing because I've heard that that ties in quite well to this but sometimes you need to take a leap of faith you have to read into a story and see if it sounds like something that you would enjoy. I've had a little look into this so despite the fact that a lot of people are saying that this wasn't a great time for the Avengers it still sounds like something that I would enjoy which is the reason why I brought it at the end of the day I'm the one who has to spend money on this stuff but yeah already the big dog of these comic book hauls was out of the equation. I was worried that books etc were going to start messaging me because I'd gone about three days without placing an order with them. But I said to myself, this is fine, there's still tons of companies. For example, you can go to Forbidden Planet. And then an order came, which was a pre-order of East of West Year 3 from Forbidden Planet. But if you've watched any of my videos before, you might know that this month we are going to be celebrating Image, which is going to be a month devoted entirely to Image. And also Ex Machina because my review got pushed back for that one. But East of West is the first book that I'm reading. I'm currently on book one now. Admittedly, I don't think it's living up to the hype as much as I thought it would because people were saying that this is the greatest image title of all time and I just don't really think it's hit that point just yet. It does seem to be getting better the more that I'm reading it and I'm hoping that now that I've got this third volume, this is where the story really all comes together because with Jonathan Hickman, I've noticed that a lot about him. So I'm willing to stick this out even though I haven't had the best time with it already and I'm glad that I've got this third and final volume and that I don't really have to worry about all those reprints that are going on at the minute and the stock issues that people are having. So with two orders in and already two of the big companies that are using these hauls are already on the banished until May list. But around Easter time Speedy Hen had a deal where if you spent over £25 they would give you £5 off. But the book that I ordered from them actually didn't get delivered until April so Speedy Hen was now off the list because I finally buckled and got the iZombie Omnibus. But this seems like a title that's fallen off the radar a bit. I get the feeling as well that because the TV 
show doesn't really seem to have that major popularity that this omnibus, when it goes out of print, probably won't get a second printing. Mike Orwood is a fantastic artist, I love what he did in Batman 66, so I'm really interested to see what exactly his style can bring to this title because it seems a bit more graphic and dark. I've been wanting to pick this up for a while and what better excuse than an extra £5 off than to just pick it up now and make sure that it's part of my haul, even if it means that I do now have to banish Speedy Hen for the rest of the month. So by this point of the month it was a few weeks in but it seemed like I'd already used quite a lot of the companies that I would go to. I then turned to eBay because I found a really good deal on two books that I said that I might pick up because there was an upcoming volume 3 and one of you guys in the comments said that I needed to get this title so because somebody was selling them off I got volumes 1 and 2 of the complete collections of Spider Girl. Yeah they've got remainder marks but I got these for a really good price and for me remainder marks don't bother me that much when I'm looking at a trade paperback. I am really excited to get that third volume because I love what I've read from Tom DeFalco already. I've heard great things about Mayday Parker but it doesn't seem like she's got much of a presence in the rest of the Marvel Universe. Who knows maybe I'll have to do a who is on her because I've tried to do that on a few other characters that maybe people don't know a lot about. But still despite the challenge that was going on I was willing to look second hand, go on eBay and this was a deal that I was really happy with and I'm just glad that eventually I'll get that third volume and I don't really have to worry about getting this title from anywhere else. Then around the middle of the month I got a very whammy box from our sponsor Organic Price Books. I'm very grateful to JP who runs the company, he's great with the customer service and he's also just a really good dude. And because it was one massive order I got away with getting quite a few books without really breaking the rules that I'd imposed this month. And speaking of which I would definitely recommend using their website, there's going to be an affiliate link in the description down below which will greatly help the channel and as well if you use code woof woof you will get two dollars off your order at the checkout. But in case you haven't watched the video that I made about the company I'm just going to go over the books here, the first of which was the Dr. Afra Omnibus. I'm really glad that I got this, it was one of my most anticipated omnibuses of this year and everything that I've read from the Star Wars universe since Marvel got the rights to distribute comics for them again I've really enjoyed. But this is no exception to that, it's Kevin Gillen that's on the writing again so I've got really high hopes for this one. I'm not really sure if there's going to be a volume 2 because there is a very very tiny one that's on the spine so I'm not really too sure what's happening there. I went with the standard edition cover because they changed the covers and as soon as they were changed I wasn't really a massive fan of either one of them so I might as well go with the standard one and I'm just grateful to JP because he did give this one to me in support of the channel. Anyway the next book that he was generous enough to send to me was the X-Men Inferno Omnibus. This was a title that I had that original hardcover that came out about 10 or so years ago but I read it when I didn't really know a lot about the X-Men. I remembered enjoying it but I don't think that I fully understood exactly what was going on and Marvel has done a really good job of reprinting X titles in the last year. Yeah I really hope that they do Fall of the Mutants because that was one of the other hardcovers that I got as well but I remember really enjoying that start to finish. I'm really glad that I managed to get this one. I hope that everybody that did want this manages to get their hands on it because I know that there were some stock issues in a few places. But regardless this is a whammy boy that I am very glad to see enter the dog pound and it's going to look great along with the rest of the X-Men books. The last book that he was generous enough to send to me was the X-Men by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee volume 2. I never got a chance to get my hands on this when it was originally coming out. That was when I didn't have a lot of money to spend on omnibuses so now it's great that these are coming back so that I can finally get my hands on these. It's even better that JP had this in stock and that he was willing to send this across to me but this was one that I wasn't going to let fall under my radar once again. I love Jim Lee. I've actually got a very exciting video that I'm planning that's something completely different for the channel so make sure that you subscribe because I'm trying to get it out in time for Image. But yeah, I know that we still need maybe an Uncanny X-Men Volume 5 and maybe even a Volume 6, but having this in my collection really feels like I've finished something off that I never got a chance to a few years ago. So again, thank you to JP for sending these across to me and for supporting the channel. It is greatly appreciated and it means more than I can probably ever say. I'm not really too great at articulating my words, as you've probably seen if you've watched more than one video on this channel. But if somebody is supporting the channel, I don't really like to take that for granted, so I wanted to make sure that I brought a few books off him just so that I could show my support and the first one that I picked up was Berserk Deluxe Edition Volume 7. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a manga guy. And I know I'm missing Volume 6, but that looks like it's going to come back in stock as well. So I'm going to be able to catch up on these. And I'm not really sure how many more volumes of this we need. I know it's technically not finished just yet. But I'm wondering at which point I can comfortably jump into the series. Because if you know me, I don't like reading and then stopping a series. I like reading it all in one go. Having that binge watch or that binge read of it. That's just the way I like to consume my entertainment. And Berserk's going to be no exception. Especially with how addicting people say that this title is. It's one that I'm keeping 
sealed for my own protection at this point. And the last book that I got from Organic Price Books that still feels surreal to even have in my hands is the Usagi Ujimbo Limited Edition Volume 1. The second printing, of course, I don't think I've ever even seen somebody selling the first edition, but all I've read of Usagi Ujimbo is the crossover with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I really like what I've seen of this character so far. Admittedly, though, I know how difficult it's going to be to complete this series, so what I'm planning on doing is getting the trade paperback so that I can read it, so that I can enjoy it, and if or when I ever see any of these future volumes coming out, that's when I'll just jump on it, and hopefully, maybe when I'm like dying on my deathbed, I can look across and see that I've got the full set. I'm not going to lie though, even in that image in my head, I still don't know if it's going to be possible to do this. But I am genuinely terrified of opening this up. Will I ever be able to open it? I don't know. But I know that when it was first announced that there was going to be a second edition of the Usagi Ujimbo Volume 1, that there was a few of the others that were available at the time. For some stupid reason, my brain told me to not take that gamble and get them then and there, because I thought that maybe I wasn't going to get that Volume 1. However, now that I did, I decided to pick up Volume 6 because I saw it in stock at Book Depository. It was the last one that they had, and it's the last of these volumes that I've managed to get from a reseller. But admittedly, this is a little bit beat up. That's the only disappointing thing with stuff like limited editions, because if it comes damaged, they probably aren't going to have a replacement. I don't know though, I find it kind of weird because Volume 6 has been in stock pretty much since it came out, but stuff like Volume 8, which came out even later, you can't really find anywhere. I'm kind of wondering to myself that it's a somebody that's pretty much got Volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 7, 8, 9, and Legends? So is there somebody that's genuinely just missing a Volume 6? Because I don't really understand how that works. Still though, as impossible of a task as it might be to get all of these volumes, I'm still glad that I've at least managed to get two of them this month. And join me 10 years from now where maybe I might successfully find one of the others. If you watched last month's haul, you know that I bought Shari Cat the Magic Knight Ray Earth box set volume two. But because she did manage to get the job, and if you're watching this, congratulations, even though I said it to you about three weeks ago now. I thought that because I gave her that gift early, I still needed to get her something to celebrate, so I got the Rose of Vassals Volume 2. Yeah, I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and I'm not even sure if I showed Volume 1 when I got her that a few months ago, but these are beautifully designed books. Like, I don't really know what this is about, but this is just a really well put together book. But yeah, because of the fact that she's definitely real and I haven't made her up, I hope that she enjoys this one as well. And if you watch this month's Whale Watch, you'll know that this was a book that had been on my radar because I didn't really know what the story levels will lie. I saw this at Read Comics for a decent price, so I decided to just pick it up, and that is the Man of Steel hardcover volume 1. Yeah, I know that everybody would have preferred this to have been an omnibus, but now that I've got this in my hands, it's still put together quite well, and I don't even know that if they now came out with an omnibus, because I'm picking up this version of this title, I don't even know if I'd really upgrade. Actually, the fuck am I kidding? I know I would. But the 6 issue Man of Steel miniseries was one of the first titles that I ever read, because they had it in some really beaten up trade paperback at my school library. Like, now that I think back about it, there were some fucking questionable stains in that book. Hopefully there's none of that in this book because I really trust Read Comics, but I'm glad that I've got this. I know that there's already a volume 2 that's come out, so I'm just glad that I'm finally getting chance to collect this classic run in at least a hardcover, even if it isn't the type of hardcover that we probably would have wanted. But at this point in the video, you've probably noticed that I haven't relied on Amazon yet, but it was because I was thinking to myself that if I use Amazon and the book comes damaged and I have to return it, can I no longer use Amazon? Amazon for the rest of April, but I wasn't really too sure of the rules that I created for myself, so I thought that I'd just play it safe. However, I did see a few books that popped up from third party sellers, so I decided to get them all as part of one order, so even though some of them were coming from different companies, they were still part of the one order, so it counts. Technicality. The first of which was Ms. Marvel Volume 4. This is a Kamala Khan run, and you know that last month I picked up Volume 2. There's a few of these Marvel Now titles that I completely slept on that now I'm thinking if I go back with a fresh perspective, can I start to enjoy this even though it seems like a lot of people don't really rate it? There is a remainder mark but it's on the top, but if we're being honest with ourselves, how often do we look at that part of the book? So I'm happy enough with this, but there's still 60% of this series that I need to buy. From the same company, so it's got another remainder mark, I got Guardians of the Galaxy by Brian Michael Bendis Volume 2. And like I said, eventually I'm planning on doing like a Bendis deep dive into all of these titles, the good, the bad, the ugly, and this is part of that 
that journey, I'm just not sure where yet it sits for me. But that wasn't the only book that I got as part of his run because I also picked up volume 5. The main complaints that I hear about this title is that it treats the characters more like their MCU counterparts rather than who they were when it was like Abner and Lanning that were writing them. I'm still happy to go in with this with an open mind, especially for the price that I managed to pick these up. But whilst I had those three books in my basket, there was another one that I noticed that I thought had gone out of print. It was for cover price and even though it didn't come from the same company, it was still part of the same order so I can allow it and that is The Orion by Walter Simonson Omnibus. I love Walt Simonson's thought and he's got an art style that really grew on me as that book continued. I don't know too much about Orion and I haven't really paid too much attention to the New God stuff when it first came out. So I thought it was time that I finally give this part of the DC universe that I'd admittedly neglected for quite a bit of time a little bit of love. Now in my luck it's probably going to get a reprint because of the fact that Fourth World is also getting a reprint. I did have to pay cover price for it though and it said that it was new but it came unsealed so I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Shadow Cat was then kind enough to treat me to a few books, the first of which was the Mike Magnola Quarantine Sketchbook. Yeah, I know that Comic Bound had this in his comic haul as well. No, that doesn't confirm that we are actually one person and we've just been fooling everyone. But this is a book that I didn't even know existed until she picked it up for me. And it kind of made me feel lazy. All I did was set up this channel and kind of talk at a camera and stumble my way through it. But I really like Mike Magnola's style and some of these sketches are just amazing. And there's such a wide array that you can see in here. So it's not just all Hellboy stuff. Like at some part, he just starts drawing chimps for no reason. I kind of wish there was just like a little bit of an explanation underneath with Mike Mignola saying what inspired him to do that certain drawing on that certain day. But I love this and I've had a really good time just flicking through it. She also got me another couple of books because if you watched last month's haul, you might remember me saying, I think she had a hidden agenda with this one because she knows I love Transformers and because it's a volume three, she knows that I'm going to get invested enough to buy volumes one and two. It wasn't my intention, but that made her feel guilty to the point where she picked me up volumes one and volumes two of the Transformers manga. I'm not really too sure the story behind this. I'm not sure if it's similar to the Super Sentai manga where it was coming out alongside with the original TV show. It'll be interesting to see how this compares to something like the IDW Transformers series. She also stumbled on quite a few other Transformers books that I didn't even know existed like this one right here which is the Transformers Vault. Years ago I had the Terminator 2 Vault. It's still at my mum and dad's because of the fact that I'm a grown man child and occasionally I like going back there and pretending that I don't have my own mortgage to pay. But this is great. It's a slipcase book where it goes through the history of all the different incarnations of Transformers. So you've got stuff like the original TV series, you've got the games that come out and some of the Michael Bay movies. You've also got Beast Wars and all the different incarnations. Like there's just so much that goes into this book and it's also really nicely presented. And the last Transformers book that she got me was Transformers A Visual History. I had the visual history of Power Rangers but this is just leaps and bounds better than that because it comes in this like really fancy presentation. It's got a lenticular cover that goes between Optimus, Prime and Megatron. And this book is the definition of whammy. Like it's also got some art prints that I'm not going to get out and show you here because it's really difficult to put them back. But near enough, everything you could want to know about Transformers is right here in this book. You'd be hard pressed to find stuff related to Transformers that isn't included in this book. So I'm really glad that she got me this one and it's only possible because of the fact that she's definitely real. But I realized something when I was scrolling through my Facebook feed. I haven't brought anything off Facebook this month so I was lucky enough to stumble on the Aphrodisiac book. This was iFanboy's book of the month probably 10 or so years ago and I've wanted to read it since. It's kind of like a satire but also a love letter to like black exploitation films of the 70s like Shaft. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like Shaft. I don't really know if the title's gonna be what I think it might be but I'm still trying to open up and broaden my horizons and read different types of comics. It's almost criminal that I've wanted this for so long but I still decided to not pick it up but going for a really good price off a great dude on Facebook so I'm glad that this is entering the dog pound finally. But I was pretty much in the last week of the month and I was looking around and I was thinking to myself what companies haven't I used? And I realised that local comic shops still need our support. So I reached out to Forbidden Planet Glasgow because of the fact that I know that they always have great stuff on the shelves. They were very helpful. I ended up buying way more than I think I should have done. But it all came as part of one order so again technicality. First up isn't really a comic but you should know me by now. They had the white Dino Thunder Ranger and I needed to pick this up. Dino Thunder is one of the series that I'm going to complete the full team for. I haven't really got any excuses. Only like five Rangers. Unfortunately it has got the ugly ass original helmet where it's missing paint but I've reached out to Hasbro and I've already got my replacement helmet on its way. But this figure overall just looks really great to me and I'm glad that I'm finally building up these teams. The teams that I loved watching when I was younger. And yeah if you can work out the maths well enough this does mean that I was still 
still watching Power Rangers in high school. But when I asked if I could buy that off them, they said the worst thing that they could possibly say to me, that they are doing a buy one, get one half price sale on all action figures. But now I decided to pick up some DC McFarlane toys because they had the Batman Arkham Asylum figure. I don't know if it's just me, but the legs at first, I thought they were on backwards because look, he looks a bit bow legged. Well, apparently that is the way that it should be, but it just looks weird. I'm probably going to have to pick up the Arkham Asylum Joker as well. I really want that Hellbat as well. And they also had the Superman Unchained, which is an army that I really want to get my hands on. But don't worry, I still bought some comics because he had quite a few on the shelves that I really wanted. The first of which I got because a few of my friends over at the comic board reviewed this and then I really wanted it because I felt left out and I felt like I was back in high school again. But it's the Absolute Scarlet by Brian Michael Bendis. I think I read the first couple of issues when it was coming out in singles, but then I just didn't carry on with it for some reason. I've been eyeing up this absolute for quite a while and I noticed that recently a few people were getting this in the holes. You know me, I love a good bandwagon even if I can't really justify why exactly I'm buying it but this, with it being Brian Michael Bendis and with it being during that transition time before he left Marvel but just after his heyday when he was writing New Avengers and Ultimate Spider-Man, this is something that I'm really interested to see where exactly this falls on the Bendis scale. And as well, I haven't had an absolute edition in a while and I really just felt like I needed an oversized slipcase book so this definitely scratched that itch for me. But you wouldn't think that that itch was scratched with the next book that I got which is the absolute world's greatest superheroes. This is a collection of short stories that was done by Alex Ross and written by Paul Dini. So you've got a powerhouse team there that's doing these stories but I didn't realise that this looks like it's gone out of print. So why am I in charge of Whale Watch because I'm really shit at it. But I'm glad that I got this but admittedly I am a little bit disappointed because I didn't think that Forbidden Planet sold books that pretty much looked like they were used. The hardcover's a little bit banged up it didn't come sealed and it's got like quite a few scuffs like I'm still happy that it's in my collection and admittedly if it's anything like Kingdom Come it's probably never gonna leave the dog pound so it doesn't really matter too much that it isn't in pristine condition and the last book that I got from them was also the last book for the month and it's one that I've had my eye on for a while but I still haven't jumped on it for some reason but I realized that enough was enough I've been saying that I'm gonna do a video about this creator for a while he's already appeared twice now in this video, but it's the Brian Michael Bendis crime noir omnibus. This is Brian Michael Bendis before we even knew who Brian Michael Bendis was. So I'm glad that I managed to get my hands on this because I haven't really seen it around for a while, but Forbidden Planet did have it for quite a discounted price. They still said it's new, but it's still unsealed and there is a few scuffs here and there, but because of the fact that it's out of print, I can't really complain too much. But to be able to see the formation years of Brian Michael Bendis's style and see exactly what carries over from here into some of his future works, I can't wait to see what exactly is in this book. As well, yeah, we know that Marvel are doing a lot of reprints, but since Bendis has moved across to DC, and because of the fact that I know that Powers is now technically owned by DC as well, I don't really know where the rights belong for this title. So I don't know if this would ever get a reprint, and I didn't really want to risk it. I saw that they had it in stock, so why shouldn't I buy it? I really wanted this. But those were all the books that I picked up in April, and once again, I managed to succeed at the challenge that, admittedly, I imposed on myself. If Every company that's been featured on this video I only used once and I think it just highlights the fact that you know you can get a wide variety of books if you just look around a little bit and as well being able to connect with a company like Organic Price Books and seeing that they were willing to support the channel and knowing that I'm able to support them back by buying other books off them in a company that's only started in the last couple of months was just really great. I hope that that's something that I can continue to do in future and again remember to use code woof woof if you are using Organic Price Books affiliate link in the description but this video is special because because if you've been here from day one, the first ever video that I uploaded was my April 2020 comic book haul. So we've now had a full year worth of hauls and this time next week, the channel will be one year old. That's really crazy to me. I didn't know if anything was gonna come of this. I only really started it because of the lockdown and because of the fact that there was so much going on that I just wanted something to distract myself with. I've tried my best to put as much effort into each and every video that I can and I'm always trying to think outside of the box and bring different types of videos for you guys. And some of the ideas that I've got for the future of this channel really excite me. I've been blown away by the support. I've made some really great genuine friends from doing this and I'm just excited to see where exactly I can take this channel. Whether you've supported me from day one or whether this is the first video that you've watched, I just want to thank everybody that has had a positive impact on the channel. Like I'm really glad that that mad dog persona that meant so much to me as a person I could bring onto YouTube and also bring it towards a hobby that I've always loved and enjoyed. And I'm glad that so many of you have already resonated with that and 
and that you are supportive of the channel and you want to see how far it can go, you guys are the ones that make me want to keep making videos. So if you're in that bracket and you'll know if you are, I just want to send a massive thank you out to you. And as well, we've got our one year anniversary celebratory live stream on May the 3rd. It's going to be at 5 p.m. UK time, so I just want to see as many of you there. So yeah, make sure that you tuned in live for that. I'm looking forward to talking to as many of you there as I can. I hope you've all had a great April haul. Let me know what you brought in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, why did you get this far? Subscribe if you're new here so we can see exactly what we do in the second year of this channel and click the bell notification so that you never miss a video. Like I've said before, check out our sponsor Organic Price Books and the affiliate link in the description, but there is also a tip jar if you do want to support the channel. It is greatly appreciated and all the money that goes towards there goes back into the channel. But why not check out one of my other videos and until next time, just make sure that you stay safe, stay reading the best books that you can find and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof! See you at the next video.